Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Habib Tafillah continue on in our reading of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab al-Wasabi rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasi'a his treatise uh, which is advice to the student of knowledge and advice for those who try to uh, embark on the steep path of seeking knowledge and really seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking to draw near to Allah azza wa jalla and that shows us also ahabatifillah that talib al-ilm is a wasila it's a means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a uh, and the scholars in fact <coughs> you receive you are seeking a type of barakah from their knowledge so this is different from the the people of Tasawwuf those people who are extreme with regards to Sufism who seek blessings from their ulama they go to them uh, when they're alive Sometimes they eat their najasa, sometimes they, and I've seen it with my own eyes, so we're not just making up stuff. Uh, they, you know, so they might ingest their body, body, bodily fluids, they may touch and kiss them, they may, uh, and in the past, in some communities, and this also was related to me from a Talib al-Ilm, one of the big students of knowledge in uh, Shehr in Hadramaut, in one of the Marrakesh Sunnah, Marrakesh Dar Hadith, one of the Kibar uh, students there who teaches, he mentioned to me that their, their grandfathers, that they used to uh, seek blessings there in Hadramaut from their Sufi uh, sheikhs, that when they would get married, they would have their new brides uh, go to the sheikh and he would give, the, give her blessings. And akramakum Allah, you understand what I mean by giving her blessings. So they actually sought to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by having their women blessed to con before they consummate the marriage. So the shaykh is actually consummated for them and then they get to enjoy their wives as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed. So this shows you the dalal. But Ahlul Sunnah on the other hand, that their path of seeking blessings and using a wasila would be through the ilm of the ulama, through the ilm of the ulama, through their books, their tapes, uh, their shuruhat, you know, their explanations, and uh, sitting with them, and in the in the gatherings of the righteous, in order to be reminded of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but not get the the sheikh him in and of himself is not a source of baraka that you touch the sheikh you get the sheikh's hair you look at uh, pictures on your phone or on your wall of the sheikh to come closer to allah so it shows it that ahl sunnah's tariqah is different than the people of bid'ah and this is very important with regards to this advice so he mentioned that this part of the advice as we mentioned in the last sitting that it had to do with avoiding uh, the gatherings of Ahl Bid'ah. This likewise is an extension of that same piece of advice, more or less. He said, uh, the eighth piece of advice, striving to sit in the gatherings of the righteous and the people of benefit. So this is a very important advice for those who want to traverse the path of ilm, those who want to traverse the path of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, those who want to tra traverse the path to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because as we know the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said man salaka tariqan yal talmisuhu bihi ilman sahala allahu lahu tariqan al jannah whoever traverses the path of knowledge Allah will make easier for him the path to paradise so that is the path to jannah and as advice for those who are on that path to jannah the shaykh says sit in the gathering of the righteous and the people of benefit so people of benefit, of course, that means those who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are going to remind you of the Saratullahi Mustaqeem. You know, they're going to remind you of the straight path. They're going to remind you of ibadah. They're going to remind you of good. And likewise, the righteous, a woman, are those who are reminding you and are an example for you uh, righteousness and to do righteous and good deeds. The Salihun. And so, from amongst the most esteemed from amongst them is Ahlul Ilm, is the people of knowledge. Why? Because 
if they are sincerely a scholar, then they yijtami'an fi sifatan, or fi sifatain. They combine two traits. The trait of uh, 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 of knowledge, Islamic knowledge, ilm al and the second trait, al-amal al righteous deeds. So they are uh, the amalina bil ilm. They are those who are practicing their knowledge. And as we also mentioned prior in another sitting, we mentioned that al that uh, the Salaf used to say al amal thamarat al ilm al amal thamarat al ilm. So, meaning that deeds, righteous deeds, are the fruits of your knowledge. So that's what we need to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al nafiya wa rizq al tayyiba wa amal al mutaqabbilin. Ameen. So he says, Allah the glorified and the most magnificent said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Restrain yourself with those who call on their Lord morning and evening, evening desiring his goodwill. And let not your eyes pass from them, desiring the beauties of this world's life. And do not follow him whose heart we have made unmindful to our remembrance. And he follows his low desires, and his case is one in which due bounds are exceeded. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is an example for us and a command for us to be with the people of good as the Sheikh is, is using this uh, ayah is Dalil for what he is uh, discussing this principle or this piece of advice to sit with the righteous and avoid the people of sh Shar meaning the people of sinfulness the people who don't remind you of Allah the people who have no benefit and the people of innovation and desires and those who follow their low desires and those who exceed the bounds, they transgress the bounds. They can transgress the bounds through their speech or they can transgress the bounds through their actions. And so you don't want to be in the company of people like that. And the glorified Almighty said, and the day when the unjust one shall bite his hand saying, oh, would that I had taken away with the prophet. Woe to me, would that I had not taken such a one for a friend. Certainly he led me astray from the reminder after it, after it had come to me. And the shaitan fails to aid man. So it shows us again, being in righteous company, being with the people of good. Very important, husna suhba. You know, having righteous uh, uh, companions, having good companionship. And Imam Anoui uh, details this important point with uh, numerous hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his book Riyadh Salahin and I advise you to go to that book and go to that chapter of uh, the chapter of sitting with the righteous or accompanying the righteous the Shaykh then said it was mentioned in Sahihain that Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala who said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the similitude of the righteous gathering and the evil gathering is like the one who carries musk and the blacksmith the one who handles musk would either offer you some free of charge or you would buy it from him or you smell its pleasant fragrance and as for the blacksmith he either burns your clothes or you smell a repugnant smell this hadith in Bukhari Muslim the Shaykh is making a stidlal from this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu meaning he is using this hadith as an evidence to point to verify uh, to prove and to uh, affirm his point which is that it is important to sit in the gathering of people who will benefit you meaning the righteous and the people of, uh, of, of benefit and the people of good and the Prophet Sallallahu in the Hadith made that similitude uh, between a, a, a good company and bad company the good company similar to the one who sells atr who sells the uh itar, who sells the uh the the oils the 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 smell goods the perfumes those things they leave a good smell 
I mean, I like oud. And oud, it's, it's very nice. That's uh, an acquired taste for some of the people. And it leaves a nice smell. And when you see some of the people, because here it's very popular, that where expensive oud, you know, they come in the masjid and sometimes it hits you way on the other side when it's a good quality oud. So they left something good with you and left you with a good feeling. I like this new masjid I'm praying in because they burn oud a lot in there. So when you come in, it's nice and fresh, you know, because it's new and the new smell of the carpets and the oud is coming toward you. And that just leaves a nice, uh, uh, it sets an ambience which is uh, pleasurable. And so that's similar to the good company. When you're in the company of the righteous, when you're in the company of the ulama, you have a good feeling. You feel good. You love those gatherings. Those gatherings of the there's nothing like them. So I advise those people who have that opportunity to take advantage of that opportunity and those who don't to strive to do so because there's nothing like sitting in the company of the ulama, especially major scholars, to really benefit from them and just watch them and listen to them and learn from the, even their, their answers, how they answer questions, how they deal with their students, how they are reserved and how they, 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 they're their strength and quwa and ilm wa istanbat in deriving the uh, rulings from the text. The Shaykh then said, Moreover, I advise you, <coughs> moreover, I advise you <coughs> to be very far away from innovated partisanship, hizbiya, mubtadi'a, and those innovative groups like Akhwana Muslimin, Jamaat al Tabliq, and Jamaat al Jihad, the ignorant imbeciles. You should strive to sit in the Gatherings of the people of knowledge from Ahlul Sunnah and seek their counsel about new issues. Beware of the whisperings of the Hizbi groups, for verily they resemble the whispering of the Shaitan. He gives them promises and excites vain desires in them, and the Shaitan does not promise them except deception. That uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah Al Nisa. And so, Ahabat al Billah, here the Shaykh is mentioning. The importance, again, of sitting in righteous uh, gatherings and being away from the people of desires, the people of innovation. Ahlul bid'ah. So, it is imperative that we strive our best to be in the company of the people of the Sunnah. That when, where, wherever you are, strive your best, do the best you can, and taqa Allah mistata'atu, fear Allah as much as you can, to sit in the company of Ahlul Ilm, to sit in the company of Ahlul Ilm min Ahlul Sunnah. Because you will find people who have knowledge from Ahlul Bid'ah. But you don't want to be in their gatherings if you can help it. So strive your best to not be, and there are many reasons for this, and this is an asl from the usul of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And we'll talk more about it in the next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.